There are a lot of FN guns that I absolutely love. The FN 5.7 pistol, the crowd-pleasing P90, and of course, the legendary FAL. But I've never been a big fan of the 509 series. The 10mm 510 is awesome. A little bit pricey, but it's pretty badass. I've just kind of considered the 509 to be too little too late. Like FN showed up to the party after the keg floated and my neighbors, Fred and Mott, called the cops again. And what kind of name is Mott? Really Mott. With that in mind, you can probably imagine what I'm going to say about the new FN Reflex in our 540 round review today. The Reflex was introduced in 2023, 28 years after the kel P11, the original micro compact, and five years after the groundbreaking SIG P365 ignited the micro compact bonfire. Now you've got SIG, Ruger, Smith & Wesson, Springfield, kel Mossberg, and more manufacturers, all of them making good micro-compact guns. By the way, I've always defined the micro-compact genre as a gun about one inch thick and about four inches tall with a capacity of at least 10 rounds of nine millimeter. HK has been developing theirs for probably three or more years, but in typical HK fashion, it'll be probably another year before the VP9CC that they revealed at Enforce Tech 2023 is launched in the United States. And FN, FN finally releases their version, the Reflex. My initial Reflex might be the same as yours was, a gag Reflex. Come on, FN. I mean, come on. It's been like five years. All you've done is squish a 509. It took that long. I was in for a surprise. And hold on to your fat, hairy moves, because so are you. Let's start with the specs as usual. The FN Reflex is an extremely compact double stack 9mm with 11 rounds of capacity with a flush fit magazine plus one in the chamber or 15 rounds with the extended magazine with a Holosun 407K installed. The Reflex weighs just 18.5 ounces, just 7 tenths of an ounce more than a P365 without an optic and the Reflex holds one more round than the 365. Plus, it has a 3.3 inch barrel, longer than the 3.1 inch barrel in the 365. FN Reflex, and I've got my SIG P365 right here. Nothing in the chamber, just cleared it. Um, you can see very, very close in terms of size. I mean, thickness looks about the same. You can see that the FN is a little bit longer, but you know, not necessarily a bad thing. About a quarter inch longer, probably slightly longer barrel. Even though the Reflex holds 11 rounds, it's pretty much the same size. In fact, the 365, because of that downward rake here of the mag plate, is actually a little bit taller than the FN. So that's impressive that FN actually makes kind of a shorter gun, but it holds one more round, which is pretty cool. So, so far, I am pretty impressed with this thing. So you can see the Reflex is quite a threat to the current king of micro compacts. Not only is it about the same size and weight, but you have extra flush fit capacity and extra barrel length in the reflex, but things get a little weird from there. And after doing the same shit for eight years and reviewing pretty much every micro compact on the market, I like it when things get weird. What am I ranting about right now? The P365 typical striker fire design the FN just looks like one. Yep, it's an internal hammer-fired gun, single action only, meaning that the FN might have the best trigger of all of the micro compacts. Although the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield Plus does stand out as a pretty good contender. In fact, this could concern some of you. FN lists the trigger weight as five pounds on their website, but after we ran over 500 rounds through this gun in one range session, the trigger breaks at under four pounds. The only sub four pound trigger I've ever felt in another compact gun without a safety has been the underrated Bursa BP9CC. Now this is gonna excite some of you and worry others of you, but any way you cut it, this trigger feels great. 
Another feature that's unique in this class of firearms with the reflex is that the slide's pretty easy to manipulate. I took my 65-year-old mother out to shoot it. She had no problem racking the slide on the FN, which actually can be a problem with other micro-compact 9mm pistols. The slides can be difficult to operate. Funny part about it is my mom loved the reflex generally, but I think mainly it's because it had a red dot and it was the first time that my mom had ever operated a pistol with an optic. The gun with the optic, that was the- My favorite. Your favorite, but because it had the optic. Yes. Yeah, I've never used one and it's almost like cheating. Mom, that's pretty good. Look at that. Related to that, there's two versions of this gun, both approximately the same cost as the respective P365 models. The 599 MSRP standard iron sight version and the 659 optics ready MRD version that I've got here. Sights are pretty good on both versions with an orange contrast tritium front night sight and traditional two dot white rear sights. The MRD is the same gun as the standard, just optics ready, with a Holosun K-series footprint, meaning that the Holosun 407 we used in this review just boop, popped right on top of the slide without any plates or any adapters needed. Love it. The 407K will actually cut that front dot in half, but the important thing is that you can still use your iron sights if the optic stops working. You get two magazines in the box and three base plates. You get the flush fit 11 round magazine I've been showing you here. You get an extended 15 round magazine. Now the 15 round magazine comes with a little grip sleeve that gives you an extended grip while the 11 round magazine comes with your choice of either a pinky extension that adds no additional capacity but makes the gun a little taller or a flat and flush fit magazine base plate that remarkably shortens the reflex to a point that it's shorter than the P365 while offering an additional round of capacity. FN owners can carry with the flush fit magazine while keeping the 15 rounders in the leather satchel that they picked up from the Ren Fair. The finish is black or FDE, which I love the FDE. I got a black copy for review, but FN just nails the tactical peanut butter in my mind, so I'm sad that I didn't get that, but then I'd have to track down an FDE dot because us kings have to slay on the range and you won't catch me with a ratchet mismatched accessory and finish. FN guys are gonna kill me, but I'll mention again, the first 509 that I ever got years ago developed rust after I threw it into my brackish water bayou behind the range. I don't know what the finish is. I don't know what happened years ago, but FN says that the reflex uses PVD or physical vapor deposition, which is quickly becoming the standard for corrosion resistant finishes. With a PVD coated slide, I would anticipate that the FN, at least on paper, should be pretty rust resistant. It's got great forward and rear slide serrations. The grip texture and ergonomics are excellent, even if my subjective opinion is that some of FN's pistols aren't the best looking but they get the job done in the ergos department. This is a very comfortable gun. The reversible mag release, very good, easy to use. Slide release, not my favorite, but I would say it's better than average for the class. It's certainly better than the Smith & Wesson M&P series, but I slightly prefer the Glock slide release to the reflex. So I was going over the top to reload instead of trying to operate the slide release. To be fair, I've got a lot more experience shooting Glocks. It's got this railed dust cover, which looks like a super tiny notch, but it's touted to work with the Surefire XSC and the Streamlight TLR7 sub weapon mounted lights. Take down, super easy on this gun. Magazine comes out, lock the slide all the way back. Rotate this little takedown lever up about 90 degrees. Release the slide and it all comes off. Please ignore the fact that this gun's filthier than your mom's E.L. James novel collection because we subjected this pistol to over 500 rounds in one very short range session, maybe an hour or two. When I received this gun at the best gun shop and range in New Orleans, the Neutral Ground Gun Company, I was in a rush to shoot it. I didn't clean it or lube it at all before we hit the line. We ran this gun dry for 540 rounds, getting the barrel and slide so hot in the process, we couldn't draw from concealment anymore. 500 rounds of miscellaneous nine millimeter plus two boxes hollow points no failures whatsoever the gun actually ran really well and we did not clean it 
nor lubricated. So actually, this gun is bone dry and a little hot right now. And you can see we just chattered the shit out of the barrel. I almost feel bad for it uh, because we just ran this thing raw dog the entire time. Not bad. We ran 540 rounds of mixed ball and hollow point through the gun. And the only failure we had was one single unusual issue where the trigger didn't reset. But I think that was because Ryan was deliberately finger blasting this gun as fast as he possibly could, not allowing the trigger to properly reset. Empty? Yeah. What happened? I had a round that didn't go off. Otherwise, we had no failures to feed, no failures to eject, no failures to extract, and over 500 unlubricated raw dog rounds. FN says that they subjected this pistol to the same battery of tests as their military and duty grade handgun, so it should withstand a significant amount of abuse, and it should be utterly reliable. Accuracy was excellent. The gun has a cold hammer forged match crown barrel, which should offer great mechanical accuracy, and this light trigger really helps with its practical accuracy. This meant that we were putting up rapid fire groups between seven yards and 25 feet that looked like this. Let's see how that goes. See, that's pretty epic good. I mean, that's 10 rounds of hollow points. I mean, obviously I need to zero the optic a little bit better, but I mean, you're talking about a couple of inches, like two, two and a half inches at seven yards, relatively rapid fire with hollow points out of the reflex. Now, to be fair, I was using the extended magazine, a little bit of a cheat. Pretty amazing, actually. We noticed that we did get slightly better accuracy, by the way, with the full-size grip getting that pinky purchase versus this Flush Fit Minimalist magazine. We were genuinely surprised at how much we liked this gun. You still haven't zeroed it correctly, but... <laughs> but no, it's... Um... Trigger's good. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> but now it's time to talk about the negatives. One, at the time of filming right now, this gun's so new, I don't even think it's being sold yet. While a number of subcompact nine millimeters have been on the market for years, and they've already established themselves as being reliable performers. That said, FN told me that they wanted to do the right thing and not beta test their pistols on customers or release a gun where they're gonna to have to recall it or fix it. I respect the shit out of that. Because this pistol's so new though, holster availability is going to be tricky. They're out there, but with the Glock 43X48, the Sig P365, the Hellcat, there are plenty of good holster options. It becomes a chicken or the egg problem with new concealed handguns. No one will make holsters for guns if people don't buy the guns, and people won't buy the guns if there are no holsters for them. That's why I would have liked to have seen FN use the same trigger guard, or at least a similar design to the P365 or another subcompact gun so you could use those holsters. Sig P365, got my holster from my buddy Roger Kivio Tactical. I was curious as to whether or not the reflex would fit. Unfortunately, I could tell just by looking at it, this rounded off trigger guard is quite a bit different than the trigger guard you have here in the P365. You can just look at it and tell, no, nope, not gonna work. Even though everywhere else they're kind of similar, but as you see here, that trigger guard just does not want to go. And if there's one thing that I know well, if it doesn't want to go, don't force it. But there are holsters listed on FN's website, so it isn't like you're totally screwed if you buy one of these and you're looking for something to put it in. With the Reflex being a bit of a latecomer, there not really being a whole ton of holster options, it being new on the market, FN's gonna have to rely upon its fan base to get this gun going, and that might not be as hard as normal, considering the Reflex price point with the fantastic trigger, the sight setup, and with this additional capacity in the same size gun as everything else, still gonna be a tall order to come in and dominate this segment of the market, but 
it seems like FN's ready for the fight. Related to that trigger, my scale was clocking this one in at three and a half pounds. And while this does lead to excellent accuracy on the range, might be a little light for a beginner or even novice carriers. Most carry pistols have triggers somewhere in the five to seven pound range to prevent an accidental discharge, but lighter triggers tend to lead to better accuracy. If you can keep it in a good holster, you shouldn't have any problems, but I gotta mention the super light trigger. Also, Connie, my mom, she said she felt the recoil was a little snappy for her. As you can see from these clips, she actually broke her support hand grip a couple of times after firing the reflex, but that's kind of par for the course with micro compact nine millimeters. In summary, gotta say, FN surprised me and Ryan with this pistol. This is a really good micro compact nine millimeter handgun possibly one of the best out there, time will tell. Making the reflex a single action with the internal hammer operating system means that the reflex has an outstanding, albeit very light, trigger. Accuracy, reliability, ergonomics were all excellent. The Holosun footprint on the MRD version, great idea. The price competes directly with other micro compacts in the premium class. Basically, they priced it off of the P365. It's also about the same size and weight as the 365, but with that extra round of ammo and a slightly longer barrel. If holster availability were a non-issue, I'd say you should definitely consider this pistol as your next carry gun. But again, time will tell, and FN probably has enough clout to get buyers and holster manufacturers on board with the reflex. The important part is, well, yes, this is another Micro Compact 9, it's not just another Micro Compact 9. With a unique operating system and an excellent design, the Reflex is different enough to set itself apart as a contender in this very crowded space. Do you want 250 bucks off of an FN Reflex? Stupid question, of course you do. Think about supporting us because we are viewer supported. Support us on Utreon or Subscribestar and you can win one of six $250 gift certificates that we give away to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore every month. We also give away a handful of $100 Blue Alpha gift certificates only to our supporters on Utreon and Subscribestar, so think about supporting us. As usual, we appreciate you watching. Please tell me in the comments, would you check the reflex? Huh? See you next time, guys. Take care.